If I'm being honest, nothing too interesting came out of this video, it's just me messing around with traffic lights. Okay, let's start from the beginning. You know how traffic lights have cycles? So for example, at some point, these cars might be moving and these other cars won't be moving, and then they'll switch to another configuration, then another, then another, until every possible path has been cycled through so that no one is stuck waiting for a green light. And at that point, it'll go back to the first configuration and start cycling again. The big question we will try to answer is, what is the fastest possible cycle for each intersection? So for example, one possible cycle for the classic four-way intersection is, first, all the cars from the south get green lights, they can move wherever they want. Then, next configuration, all cars from the east can move wherever they want. Then north, then west, and now, everyone has gotten the chance to move where they want to. Every turn that you could make has appeared, all 16 of them, so this traffic system is valid, and it has a cycle of length 4. And you might complain, oh, this is impractical, this would make for a horrible traffic system, let's not worry about that. The only thing we care about is that our cars don't crash. Mathematically speaking, these arrows must not intersect. They can branch out, merge, come really close to one another, but as long as they don't intersect, we're good. So for example, this is a valid configuration, even though it wouldn't be in real life. And as you can see, you can add a bunch of U-turns and right turns as well, and this is still valid, nothing is really intersecting. Okay, we've got ourselves a really good start. Maybe we can add on to this configuration and build a traffic system with a faster cycle than 4. After all, we have lots of arrows here already, 10 of them. But how many arrows do we need? 16, because you have 4 roads, each with 4 possible directions to go. U-turn, left turn, straight, right turn. All U-turns and right turns are covered, and we need 2 more left turns and 4 more straights. Surely we can fit these 6 arrows into 2 more configurations, which will give us a cycle of 3. But you can't. You can try it for yourself. It turns out that left turns and straights kind of take up the whole intersection, making it hard to add more arrows. So our cycle ends up being 4 again, and it turns out that your cycle will be 4 no matter what. Onto 5-way intersections. Oh, what's that? You want a proof for the 4-way intersection? I'm being too unrigorous? Hey, here's an idea. How about, instead of pulling up a math video, listening to them say, pause here and think about the problem, not pausing, going straight to the solution. How about, instead of doing all that, we look at the five-way intersection first, and maybe, just maybe, that will lead you to a proof of the four-way intersection. And you can solve one of these yourself for the first time in your life, instead of being force-fed the solution and going, Wow, that's so clever. How did they think of that? Five-way intersection, that's how they thought of that. Okay, the strategy of letting each road go individually works again. Five roads, five configurations, therefore the cycle has length five. Can we lower this number? Is 4 possible? Well, we just have to try it, don't we? 5 times 5 equals 25 total arrows to draw, and we have 4 configurations to fit them in. So let's try to stuff as many arrows as possible into each configuration. Now, after we get a few down, we notice that we could do the same thing as we did in the 4-way configuration. We could cram a bunch of U-turns and right turns in, since there's no real reason not to. But now we notice that there's no reason to do it either. We could just leave out all the U-turns and right turns and add them in later. It doesn't really matter which configuration we add them in, since it's always possible. No matter the configuration, you can always add in however many U-turns and right turns you want, and we can see why by redrawing our intersections. Instead of making it an intersection, we'll just make it a pentagon with points on the outside, each corresponding to a lane. We'll label 5 points in and 5 points out, and each arrow must lead from a point labeled in to a point labeled out. You might say, wow, absolutely nothing has changed. But we can redraw our diagram again into a circle. Nothing has really changed. Let's space out our points a little bit for symmetry. Nothing has really changed. But now you'll notice that the right turns and U-turns are basically when points direct to their neighbors. This is the same thing as a right turn. And this is the same thing as a U-turn. And since a point will always have a clear path to its neighbor, right turns and U-turns are always possible. This isn't true for left turns or any other type of turn, because as you can see, they get blocked off sometimes. Alright, to recap, we have 25 total arrows to draw, but it turns out that 10 of these arrows, the right and U-turns, don't really matter. So let's call these 10 arrows trivial arrows and the remaining 15 non-trivial arrows. Our new question is, can you fit 15 non-trivial arrows into 4 configurations? Notice how this is the same thing as our previous question, about fitting 25 arrows into 4 configurations. Okay, so can you? After a bit of waffling around, you'll find that the answer is no. The maximum number of non-trivial arrows per configuration seems to be 3, so fitting 15 of them into 4 would be impossible. So why is the max 3? I don't know, so on to 6-way intersections. The good thing is we don't need to draw a bunch of stuff again, we just add a couple extra points to our circular diagram, which is nice. 
If you do some more waffling around, the maximum number of non-trivial arrows seems to be 4 here, you won't be able to get 5. And for 4-way intersections, the maximum is 2 non-trivial arrows. Okay, well, we see the pattern. You subtract 2, but why is that? Watch this. Let me first add 1 non-trivial arrow. Now, no arrows can cross this line. Arrows must be on the left side or the right. Now, they can't be on the left side, since all possible arrows are trivial, there just isn't enough space over here. But there is space on the right side, space for one more non-trivial arrow. But no matter where we put that arrow, we are now completely out of space. All three of these sections are too small to fit more non-trivial arrows. Therefore, each four-way configuration can fit two non-trivial arrows. That means three configurations can fit a maximum of six. Unfortunately, that's not enough. There are eight non-trivial arrows, and you need to fit all of them into your configurations, meaning you need another one. Therefore, the traffic cycle must have length greater than or equal to 4. Okay, not a very satisfying proof, but let's see if we can change that. After all, we have a lot more to prove. Five-way. Now things are getting complicated, because we can either draw this arrow or this arrow. These two scenarios are different. Since we can't think of anything else to do, we might as well just deal with each one separately, and pray that we won't need to do this again. This scenario. Let's deal with the left section first, since that's the easier one. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like I've seen this before. It's too small to fit non-trivial arrows. Now the section on the right. Well, this is new. Or is it? Let's erase this left section, since we're only dealing with the right. This looks familiar. It's just a badly drawn four-way intersection. So we immediately know that the maximum amount of non-trivial arrows will be two. We already figured that out. Two plus the one already here is three, so the maximum is three, like we predicted. Oh, and we have another scenario to deal with, and now, sadly, we can't do the same trick. We haven't seen these before. Or have we? This is a three-way intersection. Oh, but we haven't done three-way intersections yet. Yes, we have! It was included in the four-way intersection. We had a three-way right here, and we figured out that three ways have maximum one non-trivial arrow. So, now we have one plus one plus one equals a maximum of three non-trivial arrows for the five-way. Both scenarios are done. Proof is now complete for five-way. Six-way now. You know the drill, non-trivial arrows can split the 6-way into 2-way and 5-way, or it can split it into 3-way and 4-way. Hmm, these both add up to 7. Anyway, 2-way has 0 arrows, 5-way has 3, 3-way has 1, and 4-way has 2. Remember, you just subtract 2 to get the number of arrows. 0 plus 3 plus the arrow doing the splitting equals 4. 1 plus 2 plus the splitting arrow also equals 4, so the maximum for 6-way is 4. 7-way. We can split it into 2-way and 6-way, 3-way and 5-way, or 4-way and 4-way. Hmm. These all add up to 8, which is 1 more than 7. Let's just write x-way and y-way, where x plus y equals 8. We already know that x-way has maximum x minus 2 non-trivial arrows, and same thing goes for y-way. It has maximum y minus 2 non-trivial arrows. Adding these all up, we get x minus 2 plus y minus 2 plus the splitting arrow equals x plus y minus 3. We already know that x plus y is 8, so 8 minus 3 is 5 non-trivial arrows. Therefore, 7-way intersections have maximum 5 non-trivial arrows. 8-way intersections. You know what, let's just make a variable and say z-way intersections. By the way, I'm using x, y, and z because verbally they stick out a lot more than n or m. Anyway, z-way intersections. They can split into x-way and y-way intersections where x plus y equals z plus 1. Why z plus 1? Because there are a total of two z points around the circle. Let's draw the splitting arrow and divide into two separate circles. Now, most of these points belong to only one of these separate circles, but these two points, the start and end of the splitting arrow, these two belong to both of these circles. Because we counted these two points twice, the total number of points counted separately is 2z plus 2. Now we know that this is an x-way intersection and this is a y-way intersection, meaning the total number of points must be 2x plus 2y. So, 2x plus 2y equals 2z plus 2, and you can just divide by 2. Okay, now that we understand this equation, back to the main problem. X-way intersections have maximum x minus 2 non-trivial arrows, and y-ways have maximum y minus 2. Add them all up, don't forget the splitting arrow, to get x plus y minus 3. x plus y equals z plus 1, so now we have z minus 2 non-trivial arrows. So now we've proved the pattern. Z-way configurations contain a maximum of z minus 2 non-trivial arrows. Now, how many non-trivial arrows are there? Remember the original question. All non-trivial arrows must appear at least once if you want to have a working traffic system. Well, there are z roads, and for each road, all turns except for these two are non-trivial. Since there are z roads to turn to, and two of them are trivial, the right turn and the u-turn, we have z times z minus 2 non-trivial arrows. Since each configuration contains a maximum of z minus 2 non-trivial arrows, 
We need Z configurations to include every arrow. Therefore, a valid traffic system for a Z-way intersection requires the cycle to be at least Z. Now let's prove that Z is possible. This isn't as hard since we just do what we did at the very beginning. For each configuration, we just pick one road and let all the cars from that road go wherever they want. Repeat for every other road, and now we have Z configurations that combine into a valid Z-way traffic system. The cycle is Z, and everyone is happy! Hooray! The proof is complete! The minimum cycle length is the same as the number of roads in the intersection. Okay, now that that's all said and done, I might do a follow-up video on this. There's still a lot to explore. For example, what happens if you disallow two arrows to touch at all, even at endpoints? And so on. It's a pretty deep rabbit hole. You'll probably get another video on this. Or not. I haven't been the best with making part twos. Okay, that's all I have for you today, and I will not see you tomorrow because I have a crap ton of finals. Peace.